you've been listening to us for a while haven't you and so you get this most of this but there's stuff that we're going to talk about here today that you haven't thought about in the way that we'll talk about it here today because this is a new moment in time this co-creating has never been before and so it's going to be new it's going to be your creation it's going to be our creation and it's going to be helpful so I want to start with something that you may not have thought about so you know how opinionated you are well it's logical that you would be isn't it because you've lived life and you've had ideas and you've fostered those ideas through conversation and contemplation and they have manifested in your life which has proven to you the rightness of your ideas because that's what the law of attraction does it always confirms through manifestation what you think so there are two things that we would like to pop open into this atmosphere before we take off into whatever it is you want to talk about and the first is the idea of how right you think you are because life keeps proving what you think and we'd like to encourage you we're really begging you <laughs> we'd like to encourage you to not think so much about whether you're right or whether the other one is wrong instead of the right and the wrong because you see you came into an environment with so many others with a variety of beliefs and intentions knowing that this diversity and this contrast would serve all of you and not one of you thought that it was your job to come and straighten the rest of them out not one of you came with that intention and yet so many humans now think that that's their job they think that their path to their happiness is by getting everybody else to give up their path you don't get to choose what's right I do and we say how's that working out not so good is it so rather than being on this beating the drum of wanting so much to be right and we can talk if you want to later on if it comes up why you do that and how to get over it but instead of wanting to be right we want you to consider asking what is the path of least resistance and that's when you get irritated or concerned because path of least resistance doesn't feel like the diligence that you thought you were born with in order to wrestle the world to the ground and kill it but if you understand that the path of least resistance is also the path of most allowance and you understand what it is that you are allowing you're allowing your connection to your source you're allowing your reason for being here you're allowing the energy of source to flow through you you're allowing yourself to be replenished by the resources of source it's a big thing that this path of most allowing allows it allows you to find a way an entertaining satisfying wonderful way to what you want without going about it in the way that most humans go about it which does not work it just doesn't work so the other day Esther not meaning to do it which means oblivious to what she had going on vibrationally noticed that she Esther was feeling really strong irritation at someone that she was talking with who was really defensive with her and Esther thought thought didn't say I don't know why you're so defensive all the time <laughs> why are you so defensive I didn't I didn't I di and then she thought or did I <laughs> I didn't say it with my words I'm very careful about that but then she acknowledged yep she was offering thoughts that a sensitive person every person on the planet was picking up on and defending against that's where your opinions really get in your way Esther sat on the airplane yesterday next to a woman that she liked so much and they talked the whole time the woman did everybody around them probably was really glad when the flight was over because <laughs> they were talking and the woman was talking about someone that she went to visit in San Antonio and the more she talked the more 
Esther understood why the person that she was talking about really doesn't like it when her parents come to visit. Because this really, truly lovely woman had so many strong opinions about the failure of her daughter's life. And Esther thought, give me your number, I'll have lunch with her. <laughs> and then Esther thought, or maybe I should mind my own business. And then Esther thought, I do have a strong opinion. <laughs> and then Esther thought, I want everybody to live happily ever after. In other words, what do you do when you're witnessing people do the very thing that you know is not going to work for them? What do you do? If you've got an opinion about them, hey, you're failing, but here's a process. <laughs> Good luck with that, right? So what do you do? What do you do when the opinion that you've gathered up feels bad to you? Well, the first thing you do is understand that the reason it feels bad is because your inner being who's right here, right now, right with you, focused on the same exact thing is not having the same opinion. Your inner being expects success is not witnessing lack of it. And we know friends, you can listen to us long enough and read enough of our books and attend enough of these workshops and blah, 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 until it feels like this is complicated because we overcomplicate it because we talk so much about so much. But really, it's not complicated. When you don't feel good, you're not doing yourself or whoever it is that you're involved with any favor. Jerry used to say, Esther heard him say it every day. And always, as he was coming into an environment like this, I want to uplift anyone I interact with. I don't want anyone to ever be diminished as a result of their interacting with me. And do you know, through all those many, many, many years of Esther, feeling that lovely intention that Jerry held. She didn't realize that he even meant, I'm not going to think thoughts that they might trip over either. Whoa, that's why I liked living so much with you, she is thinking. <laughs> you weren't even thinking negative things about me, let alone saying them. He practiced his positive aspects about her, which made a really lovely environment to live in. So we don't want you to take responsibility for how anybody else feels, but we do want you to be responsible for how you feel and understand that when you don't feel good, you're offering a vibration that your inner being isn't offering. And you certainly have the freedom and the free will to do that. Absolutely. That's how you figure out what you want and who you are. That's how you know what you don't want and launch the rocket of what you do want. And that's how your vibrational reality, we call that your vortex, becomes what it is. That's how you become. In other words, contrast is important. We're just wanting to emphasize with you as we begin here today, how important it is, how delicious it is, how good feeling it is, how satisfying it is, how productive for you it is, how much success you will find when you give up needing to be right because you're right away in conflict with somebody and so you've got this vibrational war going on between you that doesn't feel good, you're not letting yourself flow and to go with the path of least resistance which means they get to choose what they're doing, they get to choose what they're doing but there's a less spiritually based law based reason that we say to you they get to choose what they're doing and it's that you can't do anything about it you can't do anything about what is vibrating out there in your atmosphere all you can do is set your tone so that what comes back to you matches the tone that you've set and you're doing that all day every day but are you doing it intentionally usually not most people are observing and spewing a vibration and then getting stuff back and then blogging about it or whatever the accurate word for what you do now is. <laughs> We're eager to talk with you about anything that matters to you. There's nothing off limits here. We're gonna have a really good time. We are appreciating how that settled in with you. No one ran for the exit, <laughs> which means you felt some resonance with some of that. So what do you wanna talk about? Oh, there's a lot of trouble in this room. <laughs> Just the way we like it. Begin right here. So how do you stay 
I've heard you say before, I've, fall, I've agree with everything you've said, but, and how do you stay in the place where those ascended masters, you, know, you said that if you're a writer and you want Shakespeare to help you, he can help you because if you're in that high vibration, that spirit is within your range or anybody. This is the way we say that. That's right. We do say that, but this is a broader way in which we say that. Everyone who has ever been physically focused, who has reemerged in a non-physical, is aware of what's going on here in this leading edge creative environment. And so there's keen interest. And so when you think of someone that you would like to engage with or continue on with, and you're feeling good about yourself and you understand who they are and you're eager about the subject, they join you in the thought process. You can't separate where the inspiration's coming from. And part of who he was at his time, that could have become part of who I am now. Yes, but you know, this is the thing that we really want you to hear. He's not interested, or she is not interested, they are not interested in going back to what they were when they were here because you have taken it further. You've digested it. You are exploring it through your lens. And there might be thousands of you doing the same thing at the same time. And they can flow with every one of you so that the things that they were interested in can be part of this current environment. There has never been a time with so much potential for effortless expansion than now not just because there's so much non-physical helping you but because there's so much technology that gives you ease in so much of this you got but wasn't it always kind of like that yes but wouldn't you say today that more of you are in an expectant place of it than ever before yes mm -hmm. and like how you say back in the 80s it was 19 seconds and now it's closer to I think 17 it was 16, 17 50. and now it's more 16 and a half things are speeding up but there will never be instant manifestation because it must always be all right for you to have step one moments there has to be contrast and there has to be resistance because if there weren't how would you know the difference how would you find your alignment how would you tune in if there wasn't something for you to measure against this perspective relationship thing is important mm -hmm. yeah. and when I read novels that come out now objectively to me they're easier to read than the classics then but at that time that was what was the cream of the crop because the writers of them not only the physical aspects of the writers of them are more of a closer vibrational match to who you are now to the comprehending intellect that you are but their inner beings are all up to speed with now too there is no regression you cannot go back. People that yearn for the past or that feel nostalgic, they're not in sync with their inner being. That nostalgic feeling, that sort of icky feeling, that is you not moving, not going with the flow. I never liked that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.